Lords of the Fallen is a dark fantasy action RPG where you'll explore the worlds of Axiom, the Realm of the Living, and the Umbral, the Realm of the Dead. IGN partnered up with Hank Basket of HP Customs and in collaboration with Intel to create a unique one-of-a-kind PC to bring this dark fantasy to the real world. What's up, y'all? I'm Hank Basket, former NFL star turned PC builder. CI Games and Hexworks have asked me to build them the ultimate PC to give away on IGN Rewards. This system is going to be a beast. I'm gonna max out everything and build one of the most powerful systems you've ever seen to take on the Umbral. Before we start the build, let's take a look at what's going on inside. This P8 by Thermaltake is sporting an amazing Lords of the Fallen custom wrap as well as custom paint done by my guy Trevor over at WizardCo. If you think it looks sick now, just wait till you see it completed with custom water cooling and lights. On to the brains of the build. In partnership with Intel, we've got an Intel i9-13900K processor. Don't miss a single detail of simulation as Lords of the Fallen fills your screen with enemies, perform complex animation and prediction calculations for smoother movement, physics calculations for rocks, projectiles, and clothes for enhanced realism. Next is the NVIDIA RTX 4090. Ensure the highest level of performance and quality as you squeeze every bit of fidelity from Unreal Engine 5. That includes real-time global illumination known as Lumen, high quality models courtesy of Nanite, and so much more. But to boil it all down, the 4090 will let you set all your graphical settings to Ultra. On to our RAM. All you need is 32 gigs of RAM to make the most of Lords of the Fallen, but since we're balling out, we're going with 64 gigs. For our motherboard, we've got the Republic of Gamers Maximus Z790 Hero. All the ports you need and pairs perfectly with the Intel i9-13900K processor. And at the end of the day, it's great for future-proofing with its DDR5 RAM and PCIe Gen 5 slots. With its Hyper M.2 expansion card, it has all the M.2 slots we need to add even more storage. And to power this beast, we've got the EVGA 1600 Supernova P+. I've been a huge fan of EVGA since day one. They were HB Customs' first official partner and their parts speak for themselves. All right, that's enough talking though. Let's get started with this build. All right, right now it's go time. Let's get this back panel off. We're gonna be water cooling the motherboard and the CPU. So right now we got our motherboard out. We're about to perform surgery on her. The only way that you can water cool this is you have to take all this off right here because this is where our Quantum Momentum 2 will go and it's going to provide the cooling for all this to keep our CPU running as cool as possible. This is the part that can get dangerous and ugly. When you start pulling apart a motherboard, man, you better keep them screws all in the right area. So here, here we have the CPU block, massive. Now this is the part that's gonna fit custom right here. So the cool thing is that, you know, HP Customs is me, myself, and I. I've done over 500 computers already. And it goes from basic builds to, you know, how creative do you want to get? And that's what, what I enjoy, pushing the limits, pushing the boundaries. So right now we're about to put our thermal strips on. So now the CPU block is almost ready to go on. So my 13900K. Now we're going to give that little shot that everybody loves. So this is something that scared me in the beginning. I was like, all right, am I supposed to pull this off? And they're like, no, you just slide it in. And then just... Well, everybody wants to do stuff this way, that way, when it comes to thermal, I stick with the X. After the motherboard, then we're just gonna slap on the RAM, and then we'll be good to go. Then the fun really starts. So there, we have our CPU block on. We were able to exchange and swap over the LCD screen to the new block. Let's move on to our RAM. Installing our M.2s. And we're gonna have plenty, plenty of storage in this beast. I think we're gonna have 10 terabytes of storage overall in this CPU. And this is gonna be extremely fast, these M.2 cards I'm putting in. These Corsairs have read write speeds up to 10,000 megabytes per second. That is blazing fast. All right, moving on. We're going with our Corsair Vengeance DDR5, and we're going with, like I said earlier, with that 64 gig, because we want this thing to be able to handle everything you want to throw at it. And now, we have our motherboard installed. Here comes the real fun. 
So right now we're gonna get these fans mounted up because there's gonna be some places later that if we install the power supply and things like that, we wouldn't be able to get back to these lower fans. So this build at its end is going to have 17 fans in it. All staying nice and chill and still staying nice and quiet. Asus and the Republic of Gamers group, they did an amazing job with this 4090. Sheer power, these fans, it just runs absolutely cool. I mean, it's everything you could ever want in a graphics card. Anything that's ever been created, this sets the standard right here. All right, so here comes the fun part, $2,000. Let's rip it apart. So from all this to this, here's everything you need. You can tell from how many thermal strips are going on here. I don't care how many times you've done it. Never act like you know what you're doing. Every graphics card is different. And that is how to successfully water cool an ROG Strix 4090. From that massive card to this. Now that we got this completely water cooled, it's time to get your graphics card inside the chassis. So right now we're gonna be sliding this over, popping this in, and then once we get the graphics card seated and mounted to where it's supposed to be, then it's time for the fun part, time to get the water cooling. So let's get that going. One thing I like to do is always keep the cover on PCIe slots because you're moving around and you don't want to damage any of those pins because if you do, you're done. And right now, we got to put the RGB, the three pin in. So that's why I'm leaving that on until I get it ready to go. Now, before we get going with all the water cooling, I'm going to run some of the power supply cables so we know what kind of path they're going to run and how we're going to Make sure, because some of them, once you get that water cooling tube going, you can't get your hand back behind there. So we're just going to get some of those ran through right now. Ever since I retired from the NFL, like I've always worked in the video game realm. A lot of guys that I played with or played against wanted to start switching up from console to PC. I was like, man, let's turn this into something to where I get to continue these relationships and still work with these guys, but in a whole different way. We're plugging this in now, but when it comes to water cooling time, we will be unplugging it because you got to trick the power supply that it's on to get everything. To, that's how you're going to sit there and circulate the coolant all through. For water cooling, you will need a heat gun. I like using the 14 millimeter tube. It's easy to work with, but one thing I did do, I use all acrylic tubing now because when I first started, I was using the PETG and the, it didn't take a lot of heat to, to bend it. So if your coolant or your PC ever was running at a higher temperature, it could easily start bending those tubes. So we got room to spare on each end. So we'll just start trimming it down now. All right, tubing's done. I've already run power, so now we're gonna use this tool right here. We're gonna trick the power supply to think it's on, and that's gonna allow us to cycle the pump in the reservoir to get the coolant to go throughout the computer. So here comes the fun part and the scary part. Now it's like, we're gonna see the coolant going through, and we're gonna hope that everything's fine and there's no leak. So let's see how this goes. Let's see how we did. My first water cooled, I had to teach myself. Someone came to me that wanted one, I spent 24 hours heating and bending and heating and bending and learning how to water cool. I know I'm not trying to be afraid to walk away from something. I was like, let's make this happen. Let's see what we can do. And this is the water cooling cycle right here. You add some, you run it through, then you stop. You add some more and you just slowly do this process, wash, rinse, repeat until you filled it all up. Then you, then you start focusing on getting the air bubbles out and try to make it fill up the system completely and having as little much air in there as possible.
All right, now that the coolant has cycled through and settled, I took the liberty of programming the PC lighting to glow that axiom orange and that umbral blue, and now this PC is ready to fight through hordes of enemies in the worlds of the living and the dead. Head over to IGN.com slash rewards now for your chance to win this amazing one-of-a-kind PC courtesy of CI Games Hexworks in partnership with Intel. This PC is ready to fight through hordes of enemies in the worlds of the living and dead. Commence your journey through Axiom and the Umbral in Lords of the Fallen, available now. If you want a chance to win this custom PC, visit IGN.com rewards. And for all things Lords of the Fallen, keep it locked to IGN.